Hey, what's up everyone? This is the uh, the end game of my now level 100 last rate slash leap slam gladiator. And I just wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about what I did. It's really just an overview of how I min max the build and what I ended up with uh, right here in the background is a little demonstration of me uh, face tanking a tier 15 or wave 15 rather simulacrum, uh, which is now the final wave in the uh, in the game. So yeah, this is a demonstration of what the build looks like, uh, the defensive layers. It is weak to dots, but besides that, as long as you don't get one hit, you are effectively immortal. And it's just a very, very comfortable build. Uh, this is what it looks like to put a lot of money into a league starter. Um, I'm not advocating that this is the most efficient way that you can use your currency or anything, but I had a, uh, I had a lot of fun putting this together and did basically everything in the game. Uh, I will be hitting 40 out of 40 on stream today. I was farming T17s all the past week. I've killed Ubers. It's not the best for Ubers because Ubers have a lot of damage over time, uh, which is the weakness of, you know, a block-based defensive character. But for the ones that aren't putting a lot of dots on the ground and, you know, you don't have to worry, or if you're just good at dodging the dots, rather, uh, you're fine with that. The rest of this video is just going to be talking about my decisions, why I did it, maybe show you guys some variations that you can do. I'm just going to share a very simple POB below uh, in the description if you want to just grab that. It's uh, not the perfect be all end all. It's just what I ended up with. And yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, so this is a level 100 lacerate gladiator. I call it lacerate leap slam gladiator. Uh, and you'll see why in a second. If you want to know the history of the build, kind of where I came up with some of the ideas and the basic theory behind some things, please watch the last video I went into. It's more of a build guide. This is more just kind of talking about the changes since the last video and how I, you know, it's not quite min-maxed, but it's got some very expensive items in here that is pretty close to min-maxed. For the first change that we did is we are using a Vol Hatchet. This is the easiest way to craft it, in my opinion. And the reason why I switched from a Reaver Axe, which is the highest top end damage, that's what you'll see most Gladiators using. I switched to a Vol Hatchet because it has a much, much faster base attack speed, a little bit lower top end, so it's not best for your Giga single target DPS, but because Leap Slam is our primary clear skill and we just want high mobility. I preferred, uh, dramatically preferred, honestly, a much faster weapon. I gave up, you know, I gave up like 15, 20% top end damage, but that was absolutely worth it to me. For crafting the axe, what you want to do is just Essence of Contempt. You want to buy a, you know, either Vol Hatchet or Reaver Axe, depending on if you want faster attack speed or more top end damage. And then you just use Essence of Contempt and go until you hit that dot multi. You want an Elder Base. And then you go until you hit that dot multi. From there, prefixes can't be changed, veiled orb. If you get a prefix, unveil physical damage. If you get a suffix, block damage as endurance charge or damage per endurance charge, and then try to unveil attack speed. If you don't get attack speed, you can do prefixes can't be changed, scour and repeat. Or if you do unveil attack speed, multi-mod, fizz dot, and increase physical damage. Enchant it with the increased physical damage on the rune smithing from the uh, King's March and you're good to go. And you have a great, very reliable ax. This is not best in slot whatsoever, but it's a very, very easy craft. Um, you know, total prices, you know, <laughs> Veiled Orb's like nine divines right now. So that's kind of a pain in the butt, but you have a very high chance of succeeding with the Veiled Orb. So it's not really a big deal. For less than 15 divines, you can get a very serviceable, you know, T17 viable ax and you're having a good time. Let's see, next up, still about the same helmet, just a stat helmet. Reduce mana cost, we go for Fizz taken as. Body armor, we did recraft the body armor. We now have a maximum of eight endurance charges. And with eight endurance charges, we actually get 80% reduced extra damage from crits from our body armor right here. And that is from using the Essence of Horror, I believe. Let me just double check right here. I think it's the Essence of Horror modifier right here for crafting a body armor. Yep, 10% reduced extra damage per endurance charge. So you want to just craft the body armor, you know, buy a fractured base and do that. Um, also, you'll see that I am primarily using evasion bases right here. You can use evasion, evasion armor, armor, whatever. And that is because we are using iron reflexes right here. There's a world where you go into a pure armor setup, but there's a little bit of an advantage regardless. We're converting all of our evasion armor and we're not running grace. So it's like, you know, why don't you just use pure armor bases? But with the uh, Iron Reflexes, we actually are able to leverage having both a Jade and Granite Flask, pumping up both Evasion and Armor, and so that'll both stack. And since we aren't going really, really hard into Armor or anything like that, we can actually have a decent amount, 25k Armor like this, without any other buffs up, with just our Flasks up. Um, and that's a pretty good baseline, considering all of the other defensive layers. It's not really good, uh, but you know we wouldn't be that high if we could only run one Flask. 
and that's kind of the advantage right there. You can just go pure evasion if you want to. You can absolutely go into spell suppression if you're more hardcore focused, you know, grab and trench with the lucky, get spell suppression on your basis, you can do that. Next up on the gloves, we actually crafted it with an Essence of Delirium. This has the socketed gems deal 30% more damage over time because we're using Leap Slam of Groundbreaking to go around and clear. And in fact, let me show you guys a little bit of gameplay. I okay, I just wanna show you guys really quickly what this can look like if you lean into the... Uh, Attack speed and area effect and all that and just clear really quickly. The T16 8 mod corrupted strand. And what I've done is I switched out flesh and stone for blood and sand for more area effect. And then I also swapped out volatility for increased AOE. And I dropped a couple of single target nodes into brinkmanship to get the biggest AOE that we can. And yeah, this is kind of, I don't know. To me, this is the perfect way to play Path of Exile 1. Honestly, this is what I like is just really fast, fun, clear speed builds that uh, also are just, you know, well-rounded and tanky and all that. So yeah, I'm just gonna blast until the, the end of the map. But uh, this is it, you know, just leaf slamming around, really, really simple, mega tanky character. We got endurance charges, we got um, fortification stacks, etc. We got max res, we got max block. Then we get on the boss, we curse them, we do a little bit of lacerate, and we're out in less than a minute. Uh, as long as I weren't, <laughs> if I wasn't talking, that would be less than a minute. That's what it looks like if you wanna just blast maps really quickly and just have a good time. You can also just sit there and hop in T17s as well and do that. I farmed those all last week. It's uh, yeah, really good, well-rounded build in my opinion. All right, back to the rest of the video. And as you saw in the demonstration, Leap Slam of Groundbreaking, that is our primary clear skill. It is uh, you know just a big slam, big AOE and we are bleed based. So with that 30% more damage over time, this gives us a pseudo five link, which is really nice. The reason why I have attacks on the implicit right there is we have to be very careful about hitting 100% chance to bleed on our leaf slam. You wanna make sure you hit that. You can go for that with some passive points. You know, you can get chance to bleed in a couple places on your passive tree. Let's see, yeah, right here. So you can get some chance to bleed wherever. And you just gotta hit that 100%. And I was able to do that with an implicit on my gloves. Since the last video, I did upgrade the shield. This now has attack speed on the suffix. Otherwise, it's an identical shield, actually. But with the attack speed on the suffix, just a little bit comfier, faster clearing. And uh, yeah, I was able to get my 40 out of 40 a lot faster by just focusing on clear speed. For the amulet, so this is kind of a fun little thing. A new thing that's in the game this league is Blight Ravage maps can drop double allocated amulets, but they just drop as a base amulet that has those two implicits. So you have to craft it up. The search that you have to do is really uncomfortable, actually. <laughs> so you have to do something like this, where there's an allocates number and then allocates number second. And so you want to do count of one. You know, you click here, you choose count of one, and then you say allocates either the first one or the second one with the modifier that you're looking for. And then you say at least with and here, at least two enchant modifiers. So this is the baseline search that you're gonna do it for uh, if you're looking for just one base uh, modifier. And then you're gonna do the search and then you'll find all of the base amulets that have that modifier you're looking for and something else. To do exactly two specific modifiers, which I don't really recommend because it might not even, it probably doesn't even exist, right? Uh, is you could do, you know, you do one of these and then you do another one with you know two different modifiers and then you flip them. So you say either one of these two. And so you can do uh, you could do that for your search. So what I did is I put in a bunch of different allocations here that I cared about, just a really long list with at least two here as a second modifier. And then I just scrolled down and I just sat here scrolling and I found something that looked good for my build and I crafted it up. So this was crafted with, I believe, jagged and corroded fossils going for that fizz damage over time. And then we did Suffixes Can't Be Changed, Veiled Orb, and you know we hit this, so pretty good. I wasn't going for the all attributes, but this gives me a lot of leeway to you know not worry about attributes as much and kind of uh, balance a lot of other stuff on my build. Let's see, Rislatha's Coil with a Pride Increased Aura Effect. This is uh, you know basically the best in slot for the implicit there. Would have loved you know a perfect aura effect and a perfect catalyst and all that, but but that's really really hard to get. In fact, it doesn't even exist right now on the trade site. I double corrupted at least 20 Rislathas on stream, might even be closer to 30. We did it for a whole week. We're doing a couple every single day and it's uh, it's not fun. <laughs> and then we spent an entire day also double corrupting Tempest Risings and we never hit anything that we we're looking for. Yeah, you can see lots and lots and lots of double corrupts. You're not seeing any of the poofs here or anything. Double corrupting a lot of Tempest Risings as well. 
and never hit anything that we we're looking for. So I had to suck it up and just buy these. That's what I got. The Endurance Charge boots were actually not very expensive, but the belt was 15 Divines. Because Endurance Charge is one of our primary defensive layers, this is what you want to go for. Endurance Charge on your boots, even better would be an additional implicit of movement speed, spell suppression's okay, regen while moving, that's all really nice. And then last up, the fanciest thing here would be the ring. I bought a base ring with plus one endurance charge and some other implicit for 110 divines. And then we did the uh, Krasic Chimeral, which makes an imprint, and Vivid Vulture, which re-rolls an implicit on a synth item. And I tried to hit something good. We spent probably 40, 50, maybe even 60 divines of just doing Vivid Vultures for a few hours on stream trying to get a good other implicit, and we never hit anything particularly good. Because rarity also increases the amount of gold that drops, I actually decided to keep this. So this is a plus one max endurance charge crafted with Essence of Delirium for the dot multi ring. Just go for life, res, stats, whatever fits your build. And then I am mirroring that with Calandra's Touch, and yeah, that gives us plus two endurance charges, plus another third endurance charge right here. So all of that together gives us eight endurance charges, which uh, feels really good. You know, with the buff to endurance charges, giving you reduced elemental damage taken. In addition to that, stacking all of our max resistances, we are very comfortable. You know, spell suppression would technically be better, I guess, but with good max res and eight endurance charges, I think investing into spell suppression is a little bit of overkill. You absolutely could if you wanted to. If I were in hardcore, I would go into spell suppression to just make sure that I never get one shot from anything. But besides that, with max lucky block, we have fortification, we have uh, arctic armor, we have flesh and stone, we have everything together. I find this is very, very defensive and tanky in soft core to the point where I just run through maps and I click every single take more damage alter just to get more quant and just blast it really, really quickly. And um, I very rarely die. Uh, one thing that I forgot to explain in the original recording is that uh, previously, if you were following along, we were using Venopuncture to guarantee that we were chilling the enemies uh, to inflict an elemental ailment to them, which would then make them count as moving. For bleeds, it will do a base damage of 70% of the hit that you hit them with. Um, not the hit, it's the base damage. That's very important to use the right words there. The base damage of your inflicted hit I, I hate you can't use the word hit it's really annoying when you hit them the base damage that you are able to do god damn it ggg the base damage that you are doing um not the actual scaled hit damage the base damage that you're doing 70 percent of that will be done over time uh for your bleed i believe it has a base duration of four seconds so if you hit them with 10 damage <laughs> If the damage that you're doing, the base damage is 10, <laughs> and you hit them, and you pass your bleed check, then you will deal 7 damage per second for 4 seconds. However, if they are moving or aggravated, they don't stack, but either one is on the uh, that bleed, then they will actually take 2.1x. So instead of dealing 7 damage per second, it'll deal 21 damage per second for 4 seconds. So significantly more damage. And so by using the Tempest Rising Boots, we actually are making sure that as long as they have an elemental ailment, they are always counting as moving. So by default, what you see a lot of people doing with Gladiator is they're using Jagged Technique, just guaranteed aggravated, and then you're good to go. However, what we were doing before is the Venopuncture or Venopuncture Ring, however you want to pronounce that, uh, which means that when you inflict a bleed onto an enemy, then they are also chilled. And that would, you know, then they are elemental ailment, and then they count as moving, so you're doing 2.1x the damage, uh, or, you know, from 0.7 to 2.1, it's three times the damage. I was doing that before. However, when I have this insane ring, I want to mirror that ring for an additional endurance charge and all the stats. I drop the Venopuncture. Now, do I have to drop Weapon Master and go into Jagged Technique? And I thought a second, and with Arctic Armor, actually, the duration of the Chilled Ground is 5.4 seconds when you have 20% quality. And that's actually perfectly reliable, uh, and I can show that really quickly right here. Uh, first off is when they're hit me, you'll, if you see a 30% chill, that's the chill that they're actually inflicted with when they hit me. Uh, I have to mouse over the right guy. So the 30% chill, that's actually a 0.5 second chill that is inflicted with Arctic Armor on hit. However, the chilled ground, you'll notice there is a uh, chilled ground below me when I'm walking, that lasts 5.4 seconds. All you have to do when you're fighting a boss, if you're sitting there, you know, you're attacking, you're doing your lacerate, um, that 5.4 seconds, you just walk one little step and then they are inflicted with the chill. So you hit them for five seconds, then you walk one little step and then they're still chilled. Walk one little step, they're still chilled, and that's all you have to do. Every five seconds, walk one step, and they are chilled very, very reliable. 
To the point where, yeah, the Venopuncture is absolute overkill. It's a great starter ring. It's got chance to bleed, increased damage with bleeds, all of that. Really, really nice, but it's actually not necessary. However, with Arctic Armor, when the damage matters, when it counts, we can inflict them with the chill uh, anytime that we're fighting a boss. The argument there would be you are not chilling your regular clear skill, but all white and blue monsters die in one hit anyway. You don't care about that. And if you're fighting a rare, you probably have to hit the rare like one or two times with last raid. And yeah, you actually inflict chilled ground when you're leaf slamming. If you watch that when I leaf slam, the chilled ground is the entire uh, area below me. So if there's a rare and I leaf slam over him and he walks towards me, he's on the chilled ground regardless. And so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to really quickly explain why I, uh, you know, why I was able to drop the Venopuncture. And I think the Arctic Armor is actually very reliable chill for when it matters. So anyway, back to the video. Absolutely love this build, had a ton of fun with it. It was great going for basically my whole 40 out of 40. We'll be finishing that. The hardest challenge in the game is spending 20 plus divines doing one of these power runes. And yeah, it's been really, really, really fun. I will share two POBs below. One focused on just here's what you want to see when you want to see big numbers and a solid build. And then another one that is more focused towards speed clearing maps and being more fun, which is what this configuration is. Bigger AOE, faster attack speed. Okay, thanks for watching and we're going to go Get ready for the stream after this and spend all of our money much to our sadness. <laughs> all right. See you guys soon. Bye.